Warning. The Duracell Cup Series data file you have attempted to access is out of date. Uploading current file now. It's a brand new car from stem to stern, and it's never been raced at these speeds. The next-gen car is opportunity. Everything is different with the exception of, like, the seat, the steering wheel, and your helmet. Unknown creates excitement. It basically came down to short one and two spurt runs, lots of restarts, lots of torn up race cars. We're giving it another shot here. We tested out this version of Sonoma. It looks like it's going to be good, provided that the game doesn't crash continually, which was one of the big problems that we had uh, for the Circuit of the Americas weekend. We should be in for a good race weekend here for both the lights, and the Cup Series drivers. But 15 minutes on the clock here for 30 Duras Ultra Light Series drivers this afternoon that will uh, look to capture the pole position. They've been told that the timer has begun, and we will see who will be the first driver to head out on to the racetrack here in preparation for this afternoon's qualifying session. Coming off the heels, of course, of last week's race, where we ended up seeing uh, a uh, short track coast-to-coast -coast pole to win with Dave Smith. And uh, we will see if he might be able to capture his third pole on the season. Last week's pole was his second on the year, making him, so far, the only repeat pole sitter so far. Wes McCoy going to be the first driver out onto the racetrack. The number eight out of Haas Racing. Wes McCoy and this team extremely motivated this weekend and the fact that they are the only full-time light series driver that is yet to score a top ten. All other full-time drivers have scored at least one top 10. A few of them actually scoring their first top 10 of the season last week at Lucas Oil Raceway. But Wes McCoy, 25th in the point stands. Average finishing position of around 21st. And has yet to score a top 10 this season. Maybe just maybe this weekend will be his first in the top 10 column, maybe even a victory. Of course, Matt Haas, the team owner, that's got a couple of road course victories under his belt, including last season at the, uh, was last season? No. 
season six at Chatham. Gonna be some cars coming out in front of Wes McCoy, who is now on his up to speed lab. That's gonna hinder him just a little bit. There's no lap times that have been uh, clocked in yet, but we will bring up the ticker so that way you can see how much time is left in the session 12 and a half minutes you'll see there's no time that's yet been recorded and there won't be until the Haas Automation Supra makes its way back around to the start finish line we'll check in on Wes McCoy see what the first official lap time of the session is going to be as we look at last week's winner Dave Smith Dave with the victory moved up four spots in the stands to 18th in overall points and right now if the playoffs were to have begun as of last week you've got the seven drivers that would get in via top seven in the point standings regardless of if they've won or not and the three wild card spots would currently be held by former winners Michael Turner is 10th overall in the point standings Aubrey Powell 14th overall and Dave Smith 18th overall so right now Dave Smith is in a playoff position but he'd like to continue to climb his way up through the standings Get up into that top seven. 117.736. The first official lap time of the session by Wes McCoy. As we look at Destin Bolin, Cup Series regular for Young Motorsports, making his first Durst Ultra Light Series start here tomorrow afternoon. In the Kellogg's Cornflakes, Terry Labonte throwback. Destin Bolin. Trying to get a little bit of extra track time here this weekend. Well needed in the fact that we'll be uh, seeing tomorrow the Cup Series drivers on the track. We'll be talking more in depth the fact that Dustin Bolin has a victory this season at Pocono, but he is outside the top 30 in the points stands, and he suffered a DNF last week as well at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, dropping him even further in the point standings. So he needs something good to happen on the Cup side. Maybe a good run here Tomorrow afternoon in the light series will help him in just that as Jackson Haywood runs behind the 16. Haywood, the KB Racing Enterprises entry, didn't have the best qualifying effort last week. Uh, and subsequently he uh, ended up having to really fight his way up into a decent finish, which he got. He finished... Uh, high enough to jump up three spots this day is to eighth in overall point. But right now, he would be the first driver out of the playoffs as things are currently scored. It's your points leader coming into this week, Cam Wright Jr. Three top fives, five top tens in the first seven races. Biggest stat that jumps out to you, though, is an average finishing position of eighth place in seven starts. Of course, as well, a former winner on the season, currently looking to lock himself into the playoffs and right now he is fifth on the board in the Flaming Hot Cheetos Chevrolet Camaro One sixteen point five three five. Cam Wright Jr. is not necessarily known for uh, really good qualifying though if you look at the stats for him about a 16.5 average starting position Nathan Fogler Last week, Lucas Oil Raceway was not kind to him, mostly in part to the fact he didn't have a good qualifying effort and was unable to really make up a lot of ground. Because of that, Nathan Fogler comes into this race 23rd in points. And he just went to the top of the board. He was 10th, and then a 116.231 now has him at the top of the speed charts. So Fogler, hoping that will hang on here for the remaining... Eight and three quarters minutes. Looking for his first pole on the season. Reggie Fogelman, one of, I believe, four Cup Series drivers. That's going to be in the field here this week in the light series. Getting some extra track time himself in preparation for the Cup Series race on Sunday. Right now, 11th fastest for the number 11. And there's one of his track house teammates, Eli Bright. In the Sunny D Supra, right now fourth fastest for him at a 116.425. Eli Bright coming into this race 16th in points, dropped a spot in the standings after IRP last week. Three top 10 so far in the first seven races, but yet 
to score a top five here in season two. There's another of your cup regulars. Anthony McCurry will be behind the wheel of the all-star car for Garage 55 this weekend. Anthony right now 13th on the board at a 116.730. We'll follow the Celsius Mazda on the front straightaway. See if there's any improvement, and there is. 116.661 jumps him up two spots from 16th to 14th. And right behind him, another Mazda. That's our Daytona winner, Skyler Taylor. He just ran his fastest lap at the session, a 116.476. Right now, currently 7th on the board. Skyler coming into this weekend, 28 points out of the points lead, 4th in overall standings. Nathan Fogler has been toppled from the top of the leaderboard. Eli Bright clocking in with a 116.205. Now he has the fastest lap so far this afternoon. Juan Garcia, former pole sitter in his own right, 22nd on the board right now for the Jack Daniels Toyota Supra out of Trackhouse Racing. Juan coming into this one 17th in overall points. He was one of four drivers last week whose positioning in the standings did not change. The other three were up in the top five in points. Juan Garcia went into Lucas Oil 17th, ended 17th in points. 19th fastest for Colin Grace out of Haas Racing. Colin took a big hit in the points dance last week. Another driver that was bit by a poor qualifying effort that translated into a poor finishing result. His track position appeared to be pretty much everything last week. Dropped five spots in the standings now to 15th in overall points. And behind him is Roberto Crown Jr. who is fifth in the standings, 41 points out of the points lead, and is fifth on the charts right now at a 116.358. Roberto Crown Jr. trying to get back to victory lane, a former winner from last season. Would love to lock himself up a spot in the playoffs, but been very consistent so far in the early going of this season. Now well, a driver that was disappointed that we weren't going to be running Circuit of the Americas here this weekend would be Texas native Chris Dalton. Uh, we will be at Texas Motor Speedway next week, so that will be a home track start for him. But Dalton coming into this race currently 11th in the point stands. Had a great run last week as he jumped up eight spots in the standings. Right now, though, looking for a little bit more speed out of that Michael Norman Motorsports entry as he is currently 25th on the board. He's in the 116s, though, but at a 116.8, and he's coming to pit road with five minutes remaining to try and see if they can make an adjustment. Jack Mitchell, the what third, I believe, Cup Series driver we've seen so far here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He is the complete fourth driver. We saw McCurry, Fogelman, and Bolin already. Right now, 30th fastest for Jack Mitchell. That is the slowest in the session. Mitchell, this will be his uh, fifth start in the light series this season. One top five, one top ten so far in the previous four starts. Cap Batson currently sits 11th fastest in the KB Racing Enterprises Ford Dark Horse Mustang. Cat coming into this weekend 22nd in the point standings. And then right behind her, 12th fastest on the board is Michael Turner, our Las Vegas winner. Turner coming into this one, 10th in the point standings, dropped four spots in the points last week after the Lucas Oil Raceway event. Their second in points, Kyle Langland. Uh, Cam Wright Jr. right now is third fastest on the board. His closest competitor in the point standings, 14 points back, Kyle Langland sits 27th at a 116.852. And I feel like tomorrow afternoon, it's going to be another race of track position. So you do not want to be way down towards the bottom of the speed charts if you're going to be coming away with a good points day. No improvement for Kyle Langland that lap. Mike Tellier on pit road. The second entry this weekend out of Bishop Family Racing. Of course, the full-time driver in the series. Tellier is 20th in points coming into this week. And Cole Coyby right now holds the final spot in the playoffs via points. He is 7th in overall.
point standings, but of course uh, has that win at Manassas earlier on this season as well. So if he dropped out of the top seven, he'd be eligible for a wild card spot. Eighth fastest right now for Cole Coyby. Looks like the Toyotas are pretty fast here. The Toyotas out of Trackhouse Racing looking good. Number of the Toyotas out of Haas Racing looking pretty speedy. So the Supras have got it figured out, at least for the moment it would appear. Autumn Brooks. We're going to see her climbing into the cup car tomorrow afternoon. She and a number of other drivers attempting the double here this week, both lights and cup series. Autumn Brooks coming into this race 19th in the point stand. She was another driver that dropped in uh, the standings, lost five spots last week after a poor qualifying effort at the short track. Right now, 29th on the speed charts as well. Only slowest card than her is Jack Mitchell, so uh, not exactly the start to the weekend that she was looking for. Same for Brody Kupski, who last week, we talked about the fact that there were a few drivers that scored their first top tens last week. Kupski was one of them. Almost scored a top five, but got sniped for that position by Chris Dollarton late in the race. But still got that first top ten finish on the season. Jumped up to 21st in points. Right now, though, 23rd on the speed charts for that driver out of Adrenaline Motorsports. And Cody Majoric, who moved up in the point stands as well last week with a great run. He is also looking for a little bit more speed. He's 24th fastest right now in the Joanna Atwood Motorsports entry. We'll see Ralph Mace tomorrow afternoon attempting his first Cup Series start of the season. Garage 55 driver right now 10th on board in his Duras Ultra Light Series ride. Mason... Ninth in points coming into this one. He gained four spots in the stands after last week's race at IRP. Jordan Anderson lost five spots in the stands after last week. He's 12th in points coming into this one, but he just ran his fastest lap of the session at a 116.298. Currently in line for a top five starting spot tomorrow afternoon with less than a minute remaining. There's our Phoenix winner, Aubrey Powell, 17th fastest for the 71. Mentioned Aubrey is 14th in overall points and is in the second wild card position as things are currently scored. Craig Batson looking for his third top 10 on the season so far. 50% success rate in top 10 finishes in his first four starts. Sixth fastest right now for the KB Racing Enterprises entry. And David Dixon who comes into this race third in overall points, 24 points out of the points lead. He is eighth on the speed charts right now. But everybody is currently chasing the Sunny D Toyota Supra. Eli Bright with a 116.205 is in line to start on the pole position in what would appear to be an all super front row with Nathan Fogler currently sitting second. Cam Wright Jr., Michael Turner, Jordan Anderson, your current top five, and zeros are on the clock. Drivers are going to be able to come around that may have already started their final lap to complete it. But the field so spread out, the tires worn out more in this session. The longer we went, I think it's very likely Eli Bright has got this thing locked up. So Eli will be picking up his first pole of his Duras Ultralight Series career in preparation for tomorrow's Toyota 115K. As you take a look at what's coming up around the turn, Sonoma qualifying for the Cup drivers tomorrow at 1, the Toyota 115K for the lights drivers at three, and then Sunday the Alliance Truck Parts 225K right here from Sonoma for the Cup Series drivers. Still waiting for the zeros to uh, officially end the session, but nobody has been able to topple Eli Bright's lap time, so I think it's pretty much official. Eli Bright will be leading us to green tomorrow afternoon. Alongside of Nathan Fogler, best uh, qualifying efforts of the season for both of those drivers. And this will mark, I believe, the second pole of the season for Trackhouse Racing. There you see session is complete. You saw the speeds. Scrolling the top of your screen, but we'll show you the list here. This is your starting lineup for tomorrow afternoon's race. 
Gave you top five. Craig Batson will be rolling off sixth. Reggie Fogelman, Roberto Crown Jr. there in seventh and eighth. So it looks like three of the track house cars are going to start inside the top ten. David Dixon, Cole Coyby going to complete that top ten with Mason, Taylor, Dollarton, Batson, and McCoy, who was the first driver out on track in the session, going to be your top 15. Look at some of the names there. Down towards the bottom of the list, some Cup Series drivers down there. Destin Boland getting ready to make his first start of his light series career. He'll roll off 24th. Jack Mitchell going to be down in 30th. A couple of drivers out of the garage. 55 stables struggling to find speed. Sean Galgan and Autumn Brooks and the big one right there that stands out to me is Kyle Langlin. The 26 is going to roll off 27th. The driver second in points coming into this one. Talked about the fact that I feel tomorrow afternoon and the cup race itself as well. And Sunday, going to be a lot about track position, starting track position. And Kyle Langland's going to find himself already at a deficit once the green flag flies. So we'll see if just on raw speed or maybe through some pit strategy, if he'll be able to gain that track position back. But it will be an advantage when the green flag drops for Cam Wright Jr. will be on the inside of row number two in a third place qualifying effort. But congratulations to Eli Bright on capturing his first pole of the season. He'll be leading us to green tomorrow afternoon in the Toyota 115K. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, it'll be the Cup Series drivers on track here for their pole day qualifying session. Of course, Sunday they will have their race in the Alliance Truck Parts 225K. Hope you guys enjoyed today's qualifying session here from Sonoma. If you did, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, part of the crew today. We've shown you your starting grid for tomorrow afternoon's race here, and we will see you guys tomorrow afternoon for the continuation of our race weekend here at the Sonoma Raceway. If you've been watching another broadcast courtesy of SRA TV, offline racing at its best. following has been a presentation of NNSCRA TV for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the consent of the NNSCRA is prohibited. NNSCRA would like to thank all of our loyal fans, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.